Should be back now. Okay, so tonight's uh, tonight is going to be continuity from what we practiced last Saturday, uh, which was uh, we took a look at my patron saint Tradmore again, and also Burn Hogarth, who Burn Hogarth is a big influence on Tradmore. Amazing fucking comic artist. Those really wild dynamic dynamic uh, dynamic uh, poses. And also, he's definitely—I he, would definitely say he's influenced by Hirohiko or Rocky. Like, there's some direct homages to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and some of his stuff. Uh, but yeah, Trad Moore is an amazing artist. He's one of my current spirit animals. I'll show you some other things I found that are kind of interesting. But we're going to start with a two-minute figure drawing set. Let me just make sure I get this at a good size ratio so that everyone can see the uh, figure down below here. I'm going to keep things on. Whoops. I'm going to maybe put things on... I'm just going to have, like, Tradmore up there as, like, inspiration. Just like last time. I'm going to put on a few other things other than him, too, this evening, probably. I'll put on Batman here. That's a really nice... That's a really nice, uh... Kind of mystic martial art arts Batman there. Alright, so, um... I need to make a new document. One second. So let's see here, I'll make sure I save this, save, keep everything organized. So 215, 2021, class demos, come on, just draw. There we go. So this week, uh, we are actually, uh, I'm going to be talking about exaggeration a little bit, right? Uh, because it's kind of continuity from last week. But we're also going to touch a little bit on story, and um, what this Wednesday we're going to be focusing on a subject called extrapolation. Extrapolation is kind of uh, it takes going to take a little a bit of explaining explaining to get into, but it kind of tracks with like the Alex Wu gesture drawing figure stuff, which I've been mainly referencing over the course of these last several weeks. Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to share before I started, I signed up for Andy Kung's um, storyboarding class. Uh, the uninstructed version. So on the Rad How To School here, here, let me pause that. So on the Rad How To School here, like um, there's only a few slots left for the uninstructed classes, and I, I signed up for Andy Kung's version. Uh, Andy Kung's class. Am I logged in? Yeah, I'm not logged in right now, but I'm I'm, I've got that paid for now. Uh, that's gonna be starting all the way over in May. So, no, it's a April. Okay, so next month. So not that far from now. Well, it's even closer than I thought it would be. Great. So, uh, this is going to be an uninstructed class, sadly, but it's going to be really, really fucking great. Uh, if you're able to still enroll in the, uh, if you are able to pay for this, the $350, like, this was recommended to me like crazy by, like, like tons of anim tons of animators and, um, t like, TV animation writers and, uh, storyboard artists and stuff to, to not miss the, um, to not miss the, un even the uninstructed class. Also, the cool thing is, is uh, I, I'm pals with a lot of storyboard artist people, and I can get fee I can potentially get feedback like on the homework that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so, one of the some of the requirements of this is you have to come to the class with a three page script of two percent dialogue scene you wrote. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more detail on it, but um, let's see. There's a there's multi there's a multitude of uh, projects I'm preparing that are going to be that are going to be potential uh, potential things to use for uh, for that. Uh, one of them I was working on this morning. I could find the file for it here somewhere. I think it's yeah, here it is. Yeah, I'll explain what this I'll explain what the story is here, but this is like the two characters in it. This young swordsman and a kind of like a um a raccoon lemur kind of creature that is going to be talking to in a dialogue scene. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we're going to get started with a, and this is also another thing that's some kind of a weird abstract take on Little Red Riding Hood, but anyway, we're going to be getting started with like the first figure drawing set. Um, I'm going to be concentrating on doing it. Like, I want to, I want to use Magma Studio more, but, and also we have a fresh link for Mag, for the fresh page of Magma Studio if you want to use it. Um. It's linked in the Magma Studio link section right now. But, uh, uh, like the Magma Studio link section of my Discord here. Um, 
but uh, but I, I'm not going to be using it right now because it, uh, uh, there's currently a recurring bug with me where it like keeps not registering my my Cintiq pen for several minutes, and it's really annoying. So and that would really interrupt the flow of my instructing. So until I can get that figured out, I'm going to just kind of leave it as like an optional thing for people to mess on, and I'll occasionally sketch on it myself and stuff. But uh, but it's kind of that that kind of bug is a little annoying, and I'm going to have to like talk to one of the devs that's in my Discord about uh, the. Um, how to how to resolve that issue? There might be like a workaround or something, or some specific driver thing that's causing it. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna get started on a figure drawing set right now. We're this will be a warm up set for twenty minutes. Uh, okay, Google set timer for twenty minutes thirty seconds. Okay, Google set timer for twenty minutes thirty seconds. Twenty minutes and thirty seconds starting now. Okay, Google, raise volume to six. Okay, good. Stream beats. Let me put on stream beats. I'll play the I'll play the video for you. All right. Let me know if the video, if the music is too loud or too soft or whatever. Also, I want to encourage people to speak up in voice chat this session. Like we've had a lot of people really silent lately, and I want to remind people that you're allowed to speak up freely, uh, especially during these warm-up sets and stuff. And I, I want to encourage banter and and. I'll tell you, I'll, I will tell you when it's time to concentrate on the lesson or something, but right now it's okay to banter and talk. So, update on the Magma Studio problem with XP Pen. I figured it out. Good. So, as it turns out, um, the pressure sensitivity is linked directly to Windows Ink, so you have to enable that in your actual driver, and it has to be a Chromium based browser in order for it to function properly. Hmm. I wonder if there's a better way to set up things here. I'm have to think back to some of the other stream layouts I've used in the past, like because I kind of want, I yeah, I want to kind of like, I want to have the Magma Studio people on screen if I can again. I'm thinking I want to maybe like set up those Magma Studio stream blocks again. Like how how do how do people like using Magma Studio? Like uh, does it uh, have anybody been able to find a, a sweet spot with sketching in it where it, you're, you're not really fighting the materials? So I don't want because I, like I don't want people using it if it if it is kind of got a bit of a stumbling block for them feeling feeling natural drawing in at least for the time being. It's a good app. I, I found I found it really. When it's working, it, it feels really good to draw on. Oh, also, I got contacted with a scam today. Yeah, yeah there was a I put made a post about it in general in uh, in my Discord. I replied to it before I realized it was a scam, but don't worry, I didn't get like a, I didn't get like fish or anything. That's a really kind of a weird thing. It's a little tough to explain, but the thread that that thing is uh, that the that the link has is a uh, kind of kind of has a full explanation of what's of what's going on with it and how shady it is. I'll maybe at least direct people's attention to it uh, during the break or something. So what have people been up to? And how many, how many get, well, how, what have people been up to lately? Mostly trying to get myself back in the swing of daily hands. Good. You getting a lot out of doing that, by the way? Uh, I mean, 
I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more mechanically focused on how the hand kind of puts itself together. The angles of the fingers, though, are kind of keep throwing me off because I don't think I understand how, how to box shape them properly at different angles. Yeah, well, the hand is really complicated. Uh, remember, like, the uh, the rhythm lines of the hand kind of help with it, too. Like, Yeah, I've mostly just found a lot of success just by watching random anime and just, like, pausing every, like, time I see a decent hand on, like, hand on the screen and try to sketch from that reference. I don't know if I do that. There's, like, some mixed results as far as uh, anime hands go. Depends what if you're talking about if you're talking about the hands in like say um, uh, Akira or um, let's see uh, I don't know what's more recent uh, Mob Cycle 100 those uh, those have fantastic hands those would be great to study from so it really yeah, depends. I've just been studying from My Hero and uh, One Piece although sometimes you okay my my hero my hero's popular. got good hands in it. My hero's got yeah, hands on just, it. Yeah, it's a matter of hitting the keyframe and not the in-between. <laughs> yeah. The in-between is often just, like, buried. It kind of just collapses into gesture a lot. But, I mean, like, uh, once you once you start... Huh? <laughs> I'm curious as to what the scam was about. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of annoying to try to explain it out of my head. I'd, I'd better if I just point it to you, because I... It's like, that, it's like that kind of thing where I don't feel like I want to, like, spend... Synapse energy explaining it, you know. Oh, yeah. So it's better if I show it later. Right. So I really enjoyed last week when we like watched stuff in the Discord, uh, of like either TV shows or or like research. That, the research deep dives are really fun. Like the stuff on Mobius and Aeon Flux and Peter Chung last week was re was a huge blast. I really enjoyed that. Oh, I love Aeon Flux. Yeah, I mean, if we've down with replaying it again, it actually doesn't take that long to replay the the shorts. At least, I didn't re I didn't play like the whole the whole like the season the season that was like uh like a full show full half hour show. Yeah, because I remember the shorts were like what ten minutes. The original short was like ten minute, ten or fifteen minutes. The pilot, mm -hmm. and uh, the pilot was aired like on Adult Swim and st I know not Adult Swim. What am I saying? On Liquid Television, in in like chunks and stuff. But then the, at certain times they would air. Uh, sometimes they would air the whole thing all together and stuff. Uh, that was like that was originally like a pilot for a series. Uh, after that, like they they made a bunch of shorts that were mainly from Liquid Television. And then eventually got made in, uh, got made into a single season of a full show, and then nothing else except for a really crappy 2005 movie, and uh, I think one or two video games. I distinctly remember the episode where and I think some uh, comics. Out for eyeball and like switched it with an alien. Hmm. Yeah, this uh, that was probably like the. Uh, that was definitely the um, the the half hour episodes. I think. I mean, the half hour episodes are good. It's just they're a little bit longer, a little bit more of a time commitment. Yeah, Peter Chung's pretty fucking great. Ridiculously ahead of his time. Yeah. Uh, by that same token, uh, the Mo Mobius and Hodorowski. I really gotta look. Maybe we could do some Hodorowski stuff this week or something. We'll, we'll, I'm, I'm just down with like chasing whatever kind of cre like I the atmosphere of how it, how things felt last week with everything that we were going deep dives down, is it felt like the atmosphere that I was trying to go for. With a with a these with this community, which is like with, or just like Discord art communities in general, which is um, to make it feel like you're you're like at Comic Con or something and you're just getting like this steady influx of seeing cool shit and learning cool yeah. shit from like panel type things or finding or like checking out cool shows or things or uh learning learning things or checking or like check out cool visual stimulation or artistic st stimulation learning different things like it, it last week felt like we were having like a miniaturized comic con kind of comic con a little bit to me 
in terms of like the creative juice of like going from one cool interesting thing to another uh recently i found an artist that i was really into he made a french anime um i'm assuming every artist has heard of him um it's the guy who made wakfu oh yeah like yeah the french anime oh i thought you were going towards radiant for a second <laughs> i thought you were going to go for last man for a second because i really like that one but yeah uh wakfu yeah, uh, the poses that he does and, like, the, I guess, the finished product of his, his, like, regular artwork, mm -hmm. uh, I'm really into at the moment. Yeah. He knows for the warm-ups, I'm doing, like, kind of a mix of figure invention and, uh, and, and using the model and stuff. I'm trying to emphasize doing more of that now because, like... Uh, I was talking about like la the last couple of classes, like doing like copying models too much can sometimes stiffen you up a bit. Yeah, uh, I think that that's less of an issue if you're if you're working from a live figure model. Uh, it really oh, depends, though. Killing me, I jumped through seventeen layers, each one with a different pose oh. that was on your screen in the bottom right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I haven't been specifically studying hands, but hands have been like part of everything I'm doing. So like my sense of hands has improved, even though I haven't been doing. I have shamefully not been doing the daily hands. Uh, yeah, same here. Hands or something. But it's okay. I... No, I, I'm planning on like hyper focusing on hands. But I've done like the like the daily hand exercise type stuff before, um, in the past. But uh, right now I'm just kind of I'm just right now I'm just trying to chase whatever's going to help me right now for a lot of newer artists i would definitely strongly recommend sticking with the daily hands routine yeah uh for me i, I usually get heavy into hands like if i try and draw a piece and i can't get the hand right mm -hmm. i'll go into like a phase of only drawing hands just for like a month straight and then yeah once i get past it I'm just, i give up on it again yeah that's a good idea you kind of really need to be be in tune with hands to, to like pull off some like I, I definitely know that at some point I'm going to have to like really study hands because hand poses are going to be really important for the um, like the story stuff I want to do with, with some of the characters I have. Like specifically, I know what I want to do with them is going to involve me having to pull off really, co really cool, good hands. Mm -hmm. A tip that I got from a, a pretty good artist that I follow on Instagram was um, if you have trouble with something, make it the theme of your next um, drawing. So like the main character mm -hmm. that I'm or the OC that I'm drawing now, uh, her whole thing is like a her her power, quote unquote, is like, what is it? There's big hands behind her that mimic the actions of her actual hands. Hmm. And that's when I get to drawing the like full rendition of her, I feel like that's gonna help with the whole hand thing because I'm gonna have to go through a lot of poses with mini hands as well as the mm -hmm. large like demonic hands behind her. Yeah, yeah. Like for, for people who have trouble drawing hair, make the theme of your next character like someone who, I don't know, controls their hair, so you have, like, weird poses mm -hmm. for it, and it's flopping everywhere. Kind of thing. Yeah. My gestural fig figure invention is definitely improving from all this. Like, my visual library of how poses work has gone up a lot. Uh, just as a side note. Uh, something that I've noticed that I do um, is when I'm drawing, like, figure drawing, uh, I kind of, like, I'm very loose with my image and it comes out pretty well. And then when I go to actually draw a character, I throw all of it out the window and I'm like very, <laughs> very uh, precise yeah. and anal about There's it. a lot of it, really bad. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> I do that too. Like you get stupid brain when you try yeah. to sit. Well, I, uh, the way the way around that is like you give yourself permission to like, oh, I have to concentrate. I have to think about story here, or I have to think about like char like character design functionality here. Uh, you need to kind of work that out first, and then you work out what the bare elements are of what the figure is. And then, uh, here's the trick. You do a figure pose session using, uh, the, uh, the simplified character model puppet. 
where you yeah, where you have where you do normal. yeah where you do free invention. Uh, I'll show you like some some attempts at me doing that uh, during the break here. I'm trying to literally like kind of wrap my. I'll show you like those. I'll show you like those examples of those sketchbook pages where you're thinking more about story and you stiffen up. There was some uh, yeah. that that was definitely happening in the. Um, because sometimes you you need to get the story out there quickly and on the paper quickly, and it's uh, like the, your your good drawing habits kind of suffer a little bit. Yeah, it's, it, I feel like I draw totally different mm -hmm. when I'm drawing figure drawing versus when I'm drawing like from like my brain. Yeah, well, I mean that's part of the practice is like trying to learn how to marry the two. Yeah. That's what that's why I'm like trying to get more figure invention in so that like when I'm like coming up with storytelling figure poses or something um they kind of resemble more the, the same thought process that I have when I'm doing figures here like the way I'm drawing this guy right here I'm kind of drawing him like how I would draw a character or something like it's not me trying to literally copy what I'm seeing um it's like me kind of like Interpreting a little bit of the energy or the enthusiasm I have for the pose. One thing I like doing at like the end of these sessions is just taking one of the poses or like a couple of the poses from it mm -hmm. and just put doing a longer version, yes. just using only that as reference. And yeah, yeah. My own character in it. Definitely. Yeah, I've done that before too, and I've done that a couple times on the stream too. Uh, and I, I'm definitely, I definitely very much encourage that and in fact i believe that that is one of the exercises we are going to be doing this week um if not this week then next week but this week is going to involve especially on wednesday uh wednesday and friday especially um trying to like take a pose of a character and like put it on a character that's very very different mm. than the actual pose is like it could be like a four-legged animal character or something like how do you how do you make like a four-legged animal sit like have the same attitude as that with while while still like retaining like the like the pose that an actual a pose that the animal would take would it be more anthropomorphized or would it be and more kind of like an animal like an animal a animal slumped over on four legs carrying the same kind of attitude without and the overall thrust of the pose without actually literally being the same pose Extrapolation is a, a can, you can use it for that for different characters. You can also extrapolate, like for example, you can extrapolate ideas from like this pose. For example, like I'm extrapolating right now. Um, I'm not I'm not doing the pose that's here, but I'm kind of like taking some of the energy of it a little bit to play with, and I'm changing. I'm changing up the pose somewhat. And doing my own thing. This is a, a this is a mixture of exaggeration and extrapolation, right here. That I'm doing. I'm just I'm just like throwing together an example. I didn't really have a set plan for what I was going to do for this, but it's kind of like you can you're kind of like you're vibing with the pose, and you come up with something that sort of feels like it's in the same universe as the other as the pose that you're looking at, or it has some of the energy of it. Like when you're looking at the pose, you can kind of spin around in your head a little easier how a figure works, and uh, and uh, follow the flow of the energy a bit. Like even if you're not specifically drawing that pose, you can think about poses poses uh, s s kind of similar to it, or poses that it might inspire, or something. It's kind of a weird, abs really abstract way of thinking. But it's something that comes with a lot of mileage and figure drawing. Yeah, you break it down into uh, like the top half, or what I think you just did it was take the bottom of her, the bottom half of her body, turn it to the side, and then add your own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do whatever. You can do something that winds up being very, very different from what you're looking at too. Mm. It's a good way to stu to study artists you like too. I was doing some some of that with like kind of Trad Morris poses. You 
here we go. Here's some exaggeration right here. But like extrapolation, you could take this guy and extrapolate like a superhero po a superhero character onto him or something, or uh, extrapolate him onto a superhero character, or uh, or I don't know, like a a ring tailed. <laughs> I was seeing the Flash in in his pose. Or like a ring tailed lemur doing that pose or something, or or an or a scared cat, or. Right now, I'm trying to imagine the pose as if he's on rollerblades instead of a skateboard. Yeah, I mean, anything you want to do. Uh, you can change the sporting equipment. But if, if you... Just, if you oh. <laughs> do, do whatever you... thinking of the Flash mm -hmm. coming to a stop. Do whatever experiment... <laughs> do, like, you're free to experiment and see what... See, uh... See what happens. It's all about vibing. And, uh... The trick is to... Uh, the trick, the secret sauce is doing this every day. I actually really like that pose. Yeah. I haven't done too many. Um, I'm I'm gonna extrapolate some of her onto the onto this guy, just from the legs. Let's see. There we go. So I used a component of her in this pose. I like how fluent I'm starting to get with this stuff. Uh, I'm really gonna. I'm really excited to see where where things go in like a month or two, of uh, of this, and then combining it with doing actual like storyboard stuff. Oh, also, there's another trick for that. What I'm talking about. Um, if you want to like, if you want to like, if you're like, say, like you're developing a cool story or something. And you want like cool poses, but it's like you feel kind of stiffened up when you go to do them. Just do tons of cool poses with the characters. Try to like think of cool battle poses and be free with it. You don't have to be specific to the moment. And then you kind of like you can mix and match them and say and like you have like a palette box of poses that you've done. You can even use like just like gesture poses that don't have the character on them. And like oh that looks like a pose that my character might do that I've drawn previously that I can just copy paste in and uh and utilize like there's a lot of people that will go home with from like these figure drawing sessions sometimes and uh and just like use the figures in their own comics or animation or something uh in any class not just my my class specifically but i mean like any any figure drawing class i'm gonna pause on this guy So anyway, yeah, post your work in the in the Discord chat. I'll take a look at what people are doing on Magma Studio. If anyone's looks like no cowards came to the Magma Studio thing, unless that thing was hey, messing up. Spider Man hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. I don't. I wonder why there's not many not very many people using Magma today. We should mess around with it some more tomorrow, though. So I'm going to be doing another another. In Discord Hangout study thing tomorrow. It was lagging. For me. It was lagging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I should start up a, a smaller file version of it or something. I just ended up drawing a <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a giant. It's a giant 4K file, so it might be slow, causing some people to slow down. See if it. Yeah, it's not even letting me draw right now, unless that's on white. Here, one sec. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I mean, like, I like how the brush feels. I, I really do, but... Yeah, the program... I actually like the brush a little bit better that, for sketching than the one I'm using in Clip right now. But, uh... But I keep having that issue with, like, the, uh... The program just suddenly not registering my, uh... 
my input my, on my Cintiq. It's really annoying. I, I want to find out why that is from the dev. Yeah, I'm going to save that as a PNG. Uh, what brush do you use in Clip Studio for your sketchings? What brush? Uh, well, it's yeah. one of the pro brushes because I'm paying the $10 version. Oh. So I think it's just like the pencil. No, no, in Clip Studio. Oh, Clip Studio. Uh, Real G Pen. I've been bouncing between um, the opaque watercolor and uh, the marker of mm -hmm. of the pen tool, like the, the flat marker. I use it because it's kind of versatile for inking when I need it to be, and um, and it kind of it kind of feels a little. Oh, I can also like use it like a sharpie, which kind of mimics the feel of like the the sharpie figure drawing classes for animators. Where they just use like sh where they just like use like sharpie scribbles and stuff to mass in the figures. Yeah, it just kind of forces you to commit. Mm -hmm. mm. That and that and like uh, it, it 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 forces you. It does two things. It forces you to commit, and also it gives you permission to fuck up. I use the darker pencil in clip. The darker. Yeah, I've used darker for yeah. Line Interesting. Art. Uh, just because the darker pencil um, goes more, like it's dark in the middle of your lines, and then it's more opaque towards the ends, uh, the starting and the end of your line. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a uh, an official, uh, official unofficial soundtrack of the stream right here. If you got Spotify, I'm not gonna play. Uh, I can't play it because it's all copyrighted music. But this is like all my. This is a collection of most of my current earworms. Like so songs that I can't fucking get out of my head, and I keep playing over and over again. Um, and all you hear is the Ducktail scene. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll so, so I'll link that in uh, Discord chat. Okay, Google set timer for two minutes. Two minutes starting now. We'll be back from the break after the next two minutes. I'm gonna get like a sip of water or something first. I posted right. in the uh, in the drawing corner chat with my warm ups. Yeah, let's take a peek. Scribbies. Yeah, these are looking pretty flowy. Those are nice. Uh, I think I kind of feel like these are there's they're looking a little bit floaty because you're doing them digitally. Uh, I would want to definitely vary up. Uh, I will. Well, I think that digital might be holding you back a little bit. Uh, I think you need some of the tactile tooth of. Uh, I would definitely mix it up with like just get like a cheap pen, ballpoint pen, or sharpie or maybe the number two pencil or mechanical pencil or whatever whatever material you can get and some cheap paper and try doing stuff on there too in addition to doing digital and see if see like what kind of dexterity and you can get you can build out of doing that too just go back and forth you might notice that you'll see a jump in you'll see a jump in your abilities in digital after doing it after doing traditional too like it changes that it changes the way you think too. When you switch up materials like that, yeah, these are looking stronger. Oh, rad boots. You start. You, I don't think you're quite getting how the like the 3D grids works. Like these aren't really going to a vanishing point. They're kind of like thrown in. But some of these are looking a little better. But remember, remember they have to they have to feel like they're going to a vanishing point. You want to imagine where the vanishing point is and kind of get like a develop a set. You want to exercise. Every time you do one of these, one every time you do one of these, that's an opportunity to exercise your ability to kind of guesstimate where a vanishing point is. Like I'm even doing that here. Like I'm so uh, are you using a single or a two point. Whatever, whatever feels right to do here. Like for example, like I kind of know that this one's going to be two point because like their knees are knees and hips are going that way and stuff too, like that. Uh, okay, Google, stop. Let me see if I can find some good examples here. Yeah, here's one right here. This one still has this one has like freehand perspective on it right here. Uh, you can you can like start if you start like with one area of the body like this like right here. There's a kind of like I did like I knew that this would be kind of going back over here. So this is a two point with a vanishing point somewhere over here and like the horizon somewhere on here I think. Horizon's probably around the eyes, even though the head's tilted back. But then, like the hips are tilted this way, the bottom of the rib cage is tilted that way. It's a little bit further up. 
pectorals further up. This is a little straighter. It probably it's probably getting a little it's probably the horizon line is probably somewhere around here. Or here. Probably there because Yeah, probably like that. Yeah, I think it's about here-ish, I would say, because then they're they're going this way. That's what yeah, that's what that's where I where I visualized it now. I'm trying to remember what I like I was because I'm going by instinct. This stuff starts to become second nature after a while. So this is this is something like this is what about what I was visualizing. Not exact to that, like the vanishing point where they will further out over there or something, but but you can see like better... you, you see like you kind of you can, you're, the point is to develop a sense of like every time you do every time you do this you want to think of like okay the next one up uh, we kind of get I kind of guesstimate the horizon line somewhere around here so uh, these are just going to go further and further down as if there's like we're looking at the top of the cube a little bit more further and further down. You see? No, no, I see what you're getting at. Mm -hmm. But you want to the, the the point of doing like that is like you want to exercise your spatial awareness every time in like small chunks every time you do it. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but the point is to kind of exercise that. So like I don't want you to I don't want you just to like putting in like random stuff like this without a th without thinking about where the, the vanishing point could be really far off, so then they'd be pretty close together. But, like, look at this. Like, this isn't going to a perfect vanishing point, but this is kind of plausible. Plausibly going towards some kind of vanishing point over there. Just kind of use your... your you, you need to exercise your instinct, to of uh, 3D spatial awareness and stuff. There's other other rules, like, as the, stu as the grid gets further back, the grid lines are closer together. As it gets closer, the grid lines are further apart. Like it doesn't have to be. Per Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but but it's something you you all you use this you use this kind of free. That's why you practice freehand perspective like this, because you get fluent in um in understanding this stuff in small chunks, and you're always exercising it because you're all because when you're animating and doing storyboards and other things like that, you you want like. You want this stuff built in, so when you do need to work it out, it's like most of the information is already there in thumbnail for you. Or there's enough information there in the shorthand for you to extrapolate. That and then like it, it exercises your 3D spatial awareness constantly. Like you're always getting like a little bit of, you're always like working the you're, you're like a, it's you know how like in when you're getting a workout, you want to like also work the negatives. Uh, exercising your spatial awareness with that stuff like that is almost kind of like you're working the negatives of your muscle of your muscle groups in a weird way. Like you get the you get the line of action, you get the gesture and all that stuff, and uh, the shape and so on. But then you also are exercising the 3D form, and that's like almost kind of like working the negatives or something. I don't know. <laughs> you come up with a better analogy. But but yeah. It's like one of those little kind of background radiation things you want to have going, and you have to be kind of you have to kind of consciously drill it into yourself uh, before it starts to sink in. But once it starts sinking in, it starts it slowly starts to like become like part of your drawing habits. Like it's just something that you do. That's what's starting to that's what's starting to become with me. I didn't have this before. Up until more recently, I mean, I did it in the past, but it wasn't as drilled in intuitively as it is now. And I'm gonna keep running with it because uh, I want a big, beefy Chad spatial awareness muscle in my brain. So anyway, we're gonna start a new 20-minute set. Okay, Google, set minute, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Is there like? A more definitive sheet with the foot. Okay, Google, set timer place. for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. One second. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And we're starting now. I'm going to give like one minute on this guy before we skip him, I think. Because he's been there for a little while.
What were you saying? I was gonna say, is there a more definitive like cheat to turn like the foot in space in terms of just the gesture? Uh, there's a lot of different cheats for feet. Um, I don't know if there's like a definitive cheat. Yeah, because like that's one of the things I noticed that I can't quite just cheat the foot so this way it actually kind of looks right in the gesture, so it always just looks kind of off. Hmm. You, well, uh, what I'm doing is like that's a 3D shape right there. Like, my gesture always has like the 3D built into it. So like I know that the heel's there and the toe's there, so that thing's going at that angle there in 3D shape, it's 3D form, and I know that that's enough information for me to extrapolate like if I needed to draw a cube there for the heel. But if you really need to, if you really need to plant where the where the, if you're having trouble like figuring out, uh. How to plant your feet you can use the cube heel method with the hockey puck front of the foot that i've shown before or you can just use a whole you can just use a box for the whole foot this is a temporary shape whatever there's something to kind of establish it where it's got a top plane stuff anyway we're going to be getting more into exaggeration tonight after this set uh because i'm pretty sufficiently warmed up so we'll be able to play with some of this stuff really nicely we've seen these guys before we did an action study with them previously let me try do you want me i'm just doing like a quick gestural study of them without dwelling too much there's always a danger when you get like another pose like well, that you've done before that you get kind of a lock up doing them again I kind of feel like I would now because I remember because like I remember I did I walked through the effort of doing these previously so I think I would want to maybe return to these guys again after I get more warmed up though For now, it's nice to get reacquainted with them in a simple kind of stick figure gesture. Oh, move that out of the way. I may need to close the door, hang on. So I'll talk a little bit more about what I've been doing. And uh, by the way, like all that stuff I was talking about, like with us focusing on storyboarding. Yeah, that's coming too. Um, I'm still like I'm still think that like focusing on figure drawing is gonna be key to getting good storyboard results. Uh, Cause like the like going too far too far too early into doing like story classes before I really kind of before I kind of really have a good handle on on how to put everything together uh, would would be a little bit too much. So instead of that, we're going to like talk about like story and storyboarding components and chunks in these little sessions and integrate stuff like that in with our figure drawing. Like I'm going to be looking for opportunities to make some compositional things in some of these maybe in the future. I'll be looking for ideas that uh, uh, animation figure drawing instructors use, animation and story figure drawing instructors use with their students. Uh, some of that is going to be what we're doing with extrapolation this week, though.
Uh, there actually is a couple classes on specifically what I'm talking about right now for story artists, by the way. Like, um, sp there's specifically some classes include like uh, like I think Brainstorm Academy and uh, and Concept Design Academy actually has. Yeah, Concept Design Academy has specifically a class on storyboard artist drawing techniques. That's being taught by a really fucking good artist too. Sadly, I did not get in through the waitlist on the uh, the TV sport the instructed TV boarding class I wanted in Concept Design Academy, but I did get in on the the Andy Kung thing. And it's probably just as bad, but just as good. Better. Yeah, it's probably good for now because like I need to, I need to work on my work work ethic, and I'm making great progress on that on my own. And so d taking a self driven class would probably be best for me at this stage. Did you see that Japanese animators YouTube channel I posted earlier? Uh, I'll take a look. Repost it if, uh, in the in the drawing corner if you can. Yeah, let me go jump into general. Yeah, remember, uh, Raboots? Yes. The secret sauce is practice every day. That's all I have to say. Because <laughs> I'm seeing you make progress, and that's the thing. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you are, you are. I do see you listening to what I'm saying. It's just gonna take it. This this t stuff takes time to click and sink in. That drawing corner chat. There it is. <sighs> Paste. Another thing that I th think that might help you, Raboots, is if you start doing like freehand 3D box and plane studies and stuff. Yeah, I probably should try to start doing that. Yeah, like fill up a page of like some tons of freehand 3D boxes and stuff, for example. Where is the drawing corner chat? And paste there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I put I put it in the uh, drawing corner chat. So like this guy appears to be like a Japanese animator. And he's demonstrating a lot of their blocking techniques that they use to pose out things. So it was just kind of interesting seeing him just kind of. Oh yeah, this guy. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't watch the video, but I saw you link it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can take a peek at that. Maybe uh, at the end of the class. Remind me again. We can take a look at it. Maybe we can take a look at it also off off stream a bit too. Yeah, like he has a lot of videos on here where he does a lot of things from just like the pose mechanics to the head mechanics. None of them are narrated or anything like that, but it's. It seems to be very good study fodder material for like how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try a little experiment right now. I'm gonna try bringing one of my characters in onto the like the rough figure puppet model that I've been using for these poses because that this might be a strategy for me to bridge the gap of exactly what that problem that that one guy was talking about about how you stiffen up in your figure drawing versus your character work. That is a, a solution that, that is a problem that you can run, that you can, that the, literally the solution is you, uh, you make the figure drawing session into a study, you make a figure drawing session into study time for, for loosening up on that. Like you, you start doing like stu studies of the character. So you start knowing the character or the posing inside and out that you want to use. And it kind of loosens you up, and you don't get locked into a particular pose as much. So I haven't really like completely worked out the character model, but I'm starting with like some thematic ideas of him, and I'm making some. I'm setting some rules for myself about how detailed I get with him. I'm gonna keep his head very very simple, and I'm just gonna leave like he's a goblin character. So I'm gonna just like I'm just gonna indicate that it's he that it's him with the, with ears. And maybe a couple other signifiers, like the weapons that he's holding, or maybe his posture, or something. I might vary up his proportions, because there's like some proportional things that I'm messing with for him. But he's going to mostly stay some stay like this for this session. 
But if I get fluent in something like this, like I, I can like use this to pose out my boards. You can do something like this with facial expressions too, if, if facial expressions are impo are important to storytelling as well. That's a really nice pose right there. Maybe let's see if I can put maybe not necessarily him, but another fantasy character with long ears, like an elf or something here. I can probably do him. Is there anything that's like anyone's really struggling with lately that they're trying to get better at in their figures or just art in general? I mean, right now I've just been working on more so you exaggerating the poses and trying to change them from not just being purely the reference poses. Yeah. You kind of have to go back and forth between them because like you can wander too much and then kind of like lose touch with with reality. You need to kind of like use a combination of the two, you know, because you're, you're every time you use a reference, every time you study from a reference pose, you're learning something. And, uh, and every time you invent, you're, you're trying to exercise your visual library and your ability to push, push stuff beyond what you're seeing. But you kind of have to have a balance of two, like this lady here. She's got balance. I struggle a lot with rendering. We don't really cover rendering here, sadly. Yeah, I know. I'm just... It's yeah. just one of my weaknesses. And so when I see people paint, just... I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. From what, I've told, from what I've been told by people, though, like, rendering is just about time consumption. And, uh, like, uh, what matters more is, like, starting the thing, because then... Uh, or, uh, getting, like, the strong start and the strong shape design and stuff, because if you do that, then, like, the rendering part becomes... Just, like, it almost, like, fills in the gaps. And then there's, like, uh, once you get, like... Um, once you work on, like, the big lights and darks and stuff, then it's just about, like, breaking it down. Of course, I'm not, that's not really my focus, so you want to you want to listen to them over me. <laughs> my problem is the everything. The everything. The everything. The everything. Well, I mean that's uh that's everyone's problem. Oh, also another thing is I'm trying to work on making sure, like, my messy lines mm -hmm. mean something and aren't, like, messy to the point of being yeah unusable for, like... Because I want to be able to make these gestures, like... Keep them going... Make these gestures to full things. Keep them going in a direction... In a directional flow. Also, like, some... Like, uh... It, so it's going to take kind of time before you kind of kind of really... Um simplify your gestures and stuff you don't necessarily have to go like fully clean and stuff but i would t i would maybe try to like watch people like glenn vilpu and stuff who have like a really kind of light touch when they draw uh, or steve houston who's a lot more forceful when he draws forceful and decisive when he draws but he, even he like he knows where to like be productively sketchy like for example i'm kind of like just I'm just like, they, I'm going over these lines more than once to kind of just strengthen them up a bit. To sort of reinforce what I got down. Like, let's try to make like a, let's try to make strong and decisive about this pose, for example. So even if like it's wrong, you made a strong, you still made a strong decision. You made a strong statement. But even if it's wrong, 
Like you put you put confidence behind it. So that it still looks neat. So like a lot of times like you'll get stuff that's and so even if it's like confidently incorrect, like the mistake isn't wishy-washy. Like you know you can clearly see what the mistake is and then therefore fix it and uh, understand what you did wrong better. So if you're going to if you're going to fuck up, fuck up confidently. So that you have, have so your clear your mistakes are clear as day. Um so that they are correct they are much easier to identify and therefore fix and correct either by you or by another artist that will notice the mistakes uh, and uh, help you fix it because they have a better eye than yours. So try to exercise confidence. That takes, uh, you're not going to be confident all the time. You kind of have to work up to it. That's why you practice every day because uh, when you practice every day, you're exercising your nervous system and you're also getting a lot of the anxiety out of your system about drawing. So even if you're like, you're not like the best draftsman yet, like you're kind of like, you're exer you're like, work you're getting the art, you're getting the art muscle workout and the nervous system workout that you need in order to, in order to get where you need to be, basically. Like I said, the secret sauce is practicing every day, so. That's, that's literally it. It's practicing every day. Pra uh, practicing effectively every day. That's the other thing. Like, there's ways to practice ineffectively that will just reinforce bad habits and stuff. You want to kind of learn what's going to help you and what's going to hurt you and what you need to focus on. Focus and, like, simplify what you are doing for your current level. That's sort of what the path of this last few weeks has been for me because I've been kind of refocusing my classes like on on instead of trying to do animation and trying to do storyboard and trying to do this and that no 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 just 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 figures figures and we'll we'll touch on some other things that are related to figures but mainly figures but anyway uh, what was that someone was saying something oh I was just wondering what are like ineffective practice like what it, is ineffective practice it depends you? like uh like if you for example if you're if you're repeating the same mistake, you're repeating and reinforcing the, the the same mistake over and over again, or if you're doing like really empty practice that has no point to it, uh, I mean it's okay to like sketch for fun and stuff. You can do that too, and I, in fact I encourage that. But you kind of always want to like hit a break point where you realize, hmm, maybe I should get some more productive studies in, or something, or detour into that or something. And that usually involves like grabbing something to study. Or grabbing some reference if you were doing a personal project or something and you want to get something that's out of your head. Uh, you c it's like, a, like I, I talk a lot about like building your own visual library. Um, you want to, as an artist, start building all kinds of libraries of other things in general, not just visual libraries. But there's lots of stuff over time that are going to add up that you're going to draw that you're going to pull from uh, for different purposes, and one of those is your um, your knowledge base of productive drawing exercises to do when you got like a few moments when you got a little bit to practice, and knowing what what practice might be helpful for you in the moment. Like over time, you'll learn you'll learn about different subject matter to practice in your off time. Like you're seeing you're seeing me use uh, a a particular figure puppet I've been using pretty extensively over the last few weeks. Is this kind of a mix of a couple of different things, but mainly like Dis some Disney. Oh fuck! I'm not really autopiloting right now, so this pose came out for me, but. That's also another thing, like, my poses kind of suffer when I kind of talk on the stream versus, like, let me show you, what, let me show you what it, what it looks like when I'm not talking on stream. 
Like this is when I'm doing a figure drawing session where I'm where no one's watching. <laughs> like I'm able to concentrate in my own headspace and just like concentrate on the poses and stuff. He can draw how he wants to. He can leave his friends behind. Yeah. If your friends don't dance, they draw. Then if they don't draw, then they're no friends of mine. Okay, Google, stop. We'll just pause it on this guy here. Okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Five minutes, and we're starting now. Very good. I might boost that. Okay, Google, add two minutes to timer. Done. Two minutes added to your five-minute timer. You've got six minutes and 55 seconds remaining. So Monday is kind of a reorientation day a little bit, so we're kind of refocusing our energies and whatnot. Reharnessing our chi. Uh, yeah, or whatever. Um, but yeah, like actually, these are these are looking pretty good. I would say, I I didn't feel a lot of confidence behind uh this one at least. These other ones feel pretty good. I didn't finish like the other guy here, but these both feel pretty good. Um. Yeah, I think I'll use the goblin model again some more. Sort of wandered away from doing him, though. No, this is a pretty good session so far. Um, and and that, that comes down to the consistency of what we're doing every day without any interruptions in the continuity. Uh, which is really helping a lot. It's helping me a lot, for sure. It's taken me, like, almost a year to figure that out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, post, your, uh, post your stuff in the Discord if you got it. But let me show you a little bit on my screen what I've um, been working on. So this is a story that I'm not going to explain too much about, but it involves these two characters. Uh, a young swordsman and a little elderly kind of raccoon uh, lemur tanuki character. Um, some other stuff, some other sketches and footnotes for story ideas. This is like part, this is part of my more, my warning doodle warm ups from today. These are all drawings from today that you're looking at right now. This is some more stuff with those characters. And this is some stuff with that goblin character I was talking about. I'm playing with the idea of making him like a bar guest or a were, were hyena shapeshifter in addition to the other stuff he can do so here's some other takes on him i've been i've got so many different versions of this guy i'm trying to like i'm trying to like like run through as many ideas as i can with him just to kind of uh until i like kind of really know what i want to say with him and i have some pretty solid ideas of what i want to do with him in the current draft of what he's about some super quick poses of him some invention poses oh and this is an example of setting some rules for yourself to do something in this case i um said okay i'm just gonna draw like a page of invented demons it's like these two guys right and i, I have to come up with like little mini stories in my head on some of them this is this is kind of related to what we're going to be doing this week and next week which is extrapolation and story so actually i wanted to show this because this is related to story like these are two demons uh, right here who are, uh, I came up with the idea of like having like, I wanted to have each of the demons kind of based on some kind of different negative aspect of humanity. If, uh, let's see here. So these two right here are, they're like kind of locked in a, in like a moronic debate with each other where they've totally forgotten what the original re reason where they were arguing they stopped using like even language and are just like spittling at each other and and stuff and their brains are basically hollowed out husks with like wires and string and stuff in them and that other demons have put in there and so uh an average night at the bar yeah and uh so let's see here there's so this demon is kind of like sloth a little bit like laziness or whatever this is uh this demon 
is uh, about malice and divisiveness. This is like uh, this is like kind of the spirit of someone who would like manipulatively divide people up. There he is literally dividing people up down there. Uh, I'm not sure what this guy is just yet. I forget. Um, I, I there was something I had in mind with him, but I didn't finish him. This one would. This one is a. Um, uh, this one was me playing with the idea of like ignorant sheep, basically wake up sheeple, basically. <laughs> so this is a uh, this is kind of a demon. There might be a, like a large number of other demons like them that are kind of sheep look sheep or ram like. Their spines are kind of like ripped out of their body because they're you know spineless and they're really extremely ignorant and they're prone to just following other what other demons do. And. This guy right here, I forget what I, I forget what the idea was I had with him, but this guy was kind of I was kind of vibing with like a this something that kind of felt like a Shin Megami Tensei uh, demon. These are a little unfair to call demons. These are more like devils uh, than demons. Demons are demons can be good or bad in traditional traditional folklore. Demons are like have the demons have like the same range of being good or bad as human human beings do, but devils, on the other hand, devils are generally generally negative, some negative aspect of humanity. This one would be a demagogue demon or devil, right here. There's a bunch of like like ignorant masses right there that they're like charismatically pandering to and riling up. This one is a denial, a demon in denial, and I had the idea of like them. They're so so far in denial. They they like. Uh, they don't believe that they're in hell or whatever. I don't know. Just playing with stuff like that. And then there's the, these guys right here. I did. This is not. This was. This is for a story idea. That's kind of a little Red Riding Hood minimalist play and I was kind of ma imagine it like a uh, like a stage play or a stage production and I may do may do like stage act compositions or something for fun of like stage play layouts and so on I imagine these is like costumes that would be worn worn by okay Google stop worn by uh, costumes that be worn by like, dancers or performers here I think I got some colors here Somewhere. Oh well, yeah. Here's the initial sketch. Yeah. They're a little bit like JoJo stands in that they're like kind of organic and inorganic at the same time a little bit. Yeah, I've shown those off before, but anyway, we'll get back to the drawing set. Oh yeah, this was uh that was last Saturday, I think. Yeah. So yeah, let's get back to the drawing set. Okay, we will set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, Google, set timer, 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And we're starting now. Goody. Yeah, today is kind of like a low key, getting back into the swing of things kind of day. We'll have more formal plans about what we're doing uh, next um, Wednesday. And also we'll be doing like uh, we'll be doing like the um, the extrapolation thing tomorrow with Alex Wu. Um, we'll be getting some practice for that tomorrow on the Discord for the good little boys and girls that have the schoolism accounts that we can practice the homework from. Well, we'll practice the uh, not the videos together. There's a few people in the Discord that, that have like signed up for schoolism and that's great. Was it Gus that was one of the ones that has a schoolism account right now? I don't think Gus is here today. Oh also remember Miles that I had on like like um I haven't had her on this year, but remember, like last um, last year, I had her on as a guest a couple times. She's a really fucking awesome artist. 
Uh, she's getting, finally getting their wife, her Wi-Fi, uh, installed at her house. So she'll finally be able to participate and, and, uh, offer input to people in the classes that I do here. I should probably give her mod chip when we do that, when, before then, or something. She was on a failed game dev project that I was trying to get, I was trying to experimentally run last year too. Uh, and I quickly learned that I was like stretching myself way too thin. And we had to kind of put, put, up, put that project on hold, but we still have like all the concept work from it. And it was a fun exercise, even if we didn't get very far with it. And I got some little fun studies and stuff. It actually taught me a lot of what, more of what I actually need to study. And so some of that is in mind, even when I'm studying right now. Like I kind of found it, figured out what, what a lot of my shortcomings were while trying to make like project work. In fact, I believe I might actually be using some of the stuff from that for some of the, uh, from some of the, um, some of the Andy Kung Starbird class, because I have some scripts written for written for that. Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily do it specifically for the homework for his class, but I'd utilize like the stuff that he does that he's teaching in the class. Because uh, I have like I have basically have, like my one of the thing many things I'm going to be doing in prep for when his class starts is in addition to having the, the script ready. I'm going to have like my other project ideas ready and so read, uh, like my other project stuff that I've personal work stuff that I have had ideas for ready, organized and sorted. So like I can like bounce between them as I have ideas and then I can apply, I can use them as fodder to apply um, uh, and develop them. Um, the stuff that Andy's talking about in his uh, storyboard class. So, uh, also on that, like, um, I don't know if I should be, if I'm going to be able to, like, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually, like, play that one on the Discord, because I paid $350 for it and stuff, and I kind of know some of the people that run the thing and stuff, so I'm definitely probably not going to want to risk anything with that, but I'm sure there's stuff I can divulge from that for our practice purposes and materials I can point people towards that are going to help. But I'm going to tell you right now, anyone who can afford it, sign up for that class. And, uh, and if you do sign up for the class, let's do it. Let's do the homework and stuff together in, uh, in my discord. Uh, the uninstructed class, mind you. Because that's the only one that's still available right now. Like we can be our, we can be each other's feedback, and there's others. There's like professional story artists and stuff that I know that, um, uh, some of uh, some of which are already members of my Discord who would be happy to come on and give uh, give people feedback too. So I have some ideas of things we can screen in my Discord. I mentioned like Hodorowski movies. Those would be fantastic to screen, I think. Hodorowski and probably like Hodorowski's the, the Hodorowski's Dune documentary. For example. The Dune documentary in particular would be really great to screen, but I mean I think it's really worth it to to screen uh, some of Hodorowski's work, I may want to screen to screen it in the adults only section though. That's the only problem because it gets pretty it gets pretty graphic.
Does anyone have... Oh, I was... Oh, Gremlins 1 and 2. I'm definitely going to screen those. Um, at some point. A Doom, the Doom Patrol. Uh, the Doom Patrol TV series. I want to screen that for sure. That one's really fun. What would be some really good arty movies to screen that people might get a lot out of, though? I wonder. We'll be on the lookout for some ideas for that, for sure. I mean, in terms of arty, I mean, the only thing that comes to my mind is Interstellar 555. I guess that's kind of art house ish. It's, it's commercial music video, I guess, but it's it's neat. I mean, it would be fun to screen that sometime for sure. Um, but I'm like, I mean, like movies that would be particularly significant to like get something out of, like especially for people who haven't seen. Them. Oh, uh, if, especially for people who haven't seen them before. Uh, we we're making jokes earlier about Barton Fink and uh, Ethan's Discord. Um, some, I th actually think Barton Fink would be a great one to screen. But Barton Fink's a fucking fantastic movie, by the way. Pretty intense, too. It's about basically like a Hollywood writer, a Hollywood hack writer, having like basically a, a cascading uh, chain reaction event of like the worst day of the... the what starts off as like the best day of his life turning morphing slowly into the worst day of his life that also that just starts morphing from there into a metaphysical nightmare zone where we aren't sure what reality and fiction are anymore and the movie basically becomes a big like kind of uh fable on the anxiety the internal anxieties of hollywood writers and it was basically about like the anxieties of um of the Cohen brothers. Like they came up with the idea for Barton Fink when they were um when they were working on a project that they actually that they absolutely hated working on. And they just had like a tremendous amount of creative anxiety. And so they like they got like juiced together and they um, creatively juiced together and then they uh, uh, wrote Barton Fink. Let's see. Uh, so as far as like story and exaggeration goes in these poses, uh, I mean, this is a drawn out pose that um, it's a costume figure model. And so there's plenty of opportunity to push for story in here. Um, story isn't necessarily like the full focus of this week. This week is going to be about more like extrapolation, which, uh, extrapolation and exaggeration. Exaggeration being continuity from last week, but the principles of exaggeration is you basically like take what the figure is doing and you try to push beyond it. You try to find some kind of hook into some kind of rhythm to say something stronger than what the uh, than what the pose uh, the pose is that you're seeing is saying. So instead of like Let's say like the fi the figure pose is like doing some like really kind of ambiguous sort of thing where the hands kind of doing like something like this or something. Instead of doing that, you do like you do something really really confident like confident expressive or something. You take like ambiguous 
stuff, or you take stuff that's already pretty expressive to begin with and you push it further. Uh, what you'll find is that, like... What you'll find is that, like, when you tr often when you try to push beyond what you're seeing in the figure model, you often like hit closer to the target of like what's actually what how it actually how the pose actually feels or how the action actually feels than it would have been if you just like straight up copied what was happening exactly. And I've uh, talked about this before, but like what you're seeing when you look at like say a pose like this. You're seeing like a, re a recording of light, and you're seeing like a two human bodies, which we are wired to read as two human bodies and understand the muscles of, because we have mirror neurons in our heads that let us read uh, the muscles of other people, so we can kind of sympathize with them and understand what the action is they're doing. But we also understand visually the force of what's happening. Like, so you can really take that and push it. So like this guy right here, This is less important, so I'm making that smaller. I'm making decisions here. I'm making decisions here to push that leg up here. And exaggerate it maybe towards the camera, so it's like a big, big foot towards the camera. Versus this. I kind of like what that other leg is doing back there, so I'm going to kind of like do this, like as if like his hip is turned. Kind of. So like the bottom of the, this joint of this hip is here, joint of that hip is there. So I can retain that little bit of the knee that's sticking out there. That leg back there is like pushed back into perspective so it's smaller. This guy is kind of leaning up this way because the force of this is pushing down on him a lot more. And that's just like an example of how you can play with it. Like you experiment and try to figure out something to something to like push or pull, pull, push or pull a play with. It doesn't always work, but the point is to try. Like this girl right here. In this case, I see I see a strat. Like you want to maybe like go into these. Think they can you can go into them and play, but another thing to do is to like go on them with a strategy. Like for example. This girl right here. Or this lady. I'm going to play with the proportions of her legs just to see what would happen. And what would happen is she's starting to look a little bit like she should be advertising for a big tech company. <laughs> You've ever seen like those little like tiny flat people with giant legs uh, and, gi and often like giant giant arms too and tiny heads that like big tech companies constantly use for other advertising and branding Facebook and stuff. But this is just like an experiment. You can play with proportion and exaggerate and stuff. You can also go back, like if you see an opportunity to kind of clarify something, the pose you've done previously, or modify things. You can go back. And you give yourself permission to just fuck around with it, you know?
So in this case, I exaggerated it. So there's like a corkscrew happening, a cartoon corkscrew happening in her body here. Exaggerate the bat back here. So that's fun. Let's maybe put her hair doing that, like continuing the corkscrew. And then I probably put, the, put a silly expression on her face, like... Get back to that in a bit. Yeah, this is starting to like they look like the first draft of an editorial cartoon a little bit to me. Let's spend a little bit extra time on her because I have some ideas I want to inject here. So she's planting that foot, and this foot is coming up here, here, so there's a lot of dust being kicked up there. Start to that up a bit. Maybe push her chin up more here. Nose up here, like... Maybe it's funnier if she's kind of like tilting her head back like a dog does or something to kind of look back at the, the ball and the catcher mitt. I don't know what's happening with the catcher here, but I'm just going to put an arm here and then 15 on her back there yeah twisting is one of those things i still can't quite grasp in terms of figure yeah this one's like an exaggerated cartoon twist though so a little corkscrew body here yeah this is like a this is a good example of like cartoon exaggeration and then i can go back and clean up the idea it's okay to like scribble these ideas. Like these don't have to be clean. You're just trying to throw down the idea. Let's see here. So this guy, sometimes you want to like, this guy, oh, okay, Google, stop. So like sometimes you want to decide like, okay, am I going to go like, am I going to go like tiny head? Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay, shut up. I'm going to go like, am I going to go tiny head, big body, for example, for my exaggeration? Like that. Or am I going to go, like, big head, itty bitty body, or something, itty bitty baby body. Or am I going to go like, or am I going to go like, uh, giant ass hand? I'm just going to like do like a quick rough end of where the mass of the hand would be without worrying about making an actual hand, just to show the idea here. Because I don't want to show off my amazingly subpar hand skills. Right now, I just want to communicate this idea. So you got a giant ass hand, and then like this arm back here, really itty bitty hand back there to contrast it. I don't know. However you want to play with it, or like uh, it can do exaggerate the perspective of like 
Let's let's pause on him real quick. Like, like say you're gonna do a scene with like him running away from something. You might want to like stick his leg out further, and that like get back there gets shrunk. There's going to be kind of a warpy perspective thing happening on his body, so this hand gets a little bit qu quicker, uh, closer to us. That arm goes considerably further back here. That head is probably going to get bigger, which means better facial facial read. And then like. I don't know, there'd be like a big... Big monster behind him that's kind of following the same warpy perspective or something. And then he got something along the lines of like 1990s binder art. What's it? Mead binders? Mead sports binders? Mead sports folders. That's what we looked at last week. As uh, good examples of exaggeration. Here we go. Yeah, these really wild and warpy. But if you like, if you want like a case study in in exaggeration, stuff like this. <laughs> and like that kind of exaggeration is all over the place in Sakuga animation these days for sure. Those are exact those are heavy exaggerations. These are more like the cartoon end of things. And this is more like the warped um warped uh, uh more realistic looking illustrator uh version of exaggeration. But you see how like everything kind of plays off itself like in a rhythm and has like a rhythm rhythmic flow to it. If you removed all the airbrushy details from this, the rendering, haha, then you'd be stuck with a uh, really nice rhythmical line drawing that's based on like some really fun flowy gesture that kind of obeys like freehand perspective exaggeration rules and stuff. Like this stuff still obeys rules of perspective. It's just all warped. Like the vanishing point here is bent. It's curving in space here so on this isn't too terribly you know this isn't too terribly exaggerated is it compared to the other ones this one's a little bit flatter oh it's pretty wild though also some levi's jeans ads that uh were from this era that we that we looked at last week that are kind of in this vein as well Oh yeah, that soccer one right here. Where he's headbutting the ball. I wish I could find a bigger, bigger one of that. Okay, Google, set timer for three minutes. Three minutes, and we're starting now. But anyway, when you're doing this stuff, when you're planning what you're going to do, like these become kind of a roadmap for you to do it. Um, you can, if you're feeling confident, you can like, you can get like a little bit cleaner shorthand in. But I mean, like, there's nothing keeping you from like taking these as kind of like a plan for what you're going to do or um taking some tracing paper if you're doing it traditionally or um redrawing them or lowering the opacity on them to like go in and pick in the shapes and stuff to like make it a make it more of a defined cartoon And you can do more than one pass on this stuff too. Like, I would encourage people to do this. Like, after you got get something like this down, that might be really, really scribbly. You can go back in and try, um, try truing it up a bit. Like, I mean, when I'd go back through on this guy, for example, like, this is a really, really simple image. So I go back in and start like, like adding in the little bit of the hand, a little bit of the gesture of the hand. Start like in the arm a little bit I can like get the oversized caricature of his head start plotting start blocking in some of the masses of his face of the caricature of his face a bit 
I like the idea of him being like really, really intense. He got a really intense glare, but he's got this goofy giant head, which I'd probably exaggerate the forehead on like some Modoc shit. It's like a Modoc character out for a drug. Has Modoc appeared in the Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe yet? No. I hope he does. I hope he shows up in 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 a uh, multiverse of madness. I'm trying to remember. Is he was he just specifically just Hive, or was he something else like like intergalactic? I don't know. He's a giant, goofy, giant ass head, giant ass stupid head, uh, and with the, the dumbest villain name ever. His his name is an is literally just an acronym of. Uh, of like what his function is, which is like made made only for murdering and killing or some shit. And his origin is that he was a guy who uh, didn't had a regular sized head, and then uh, science happened, and now he's got a giant head, and he only thinks about killing. And uh, and is a giant brain genius about killing. Okay, that's Google, stop. You What's that? That's all you need. That's the perfect story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like the bonkers logic of like some of that older Marvel stuff, but he is one of the dumbest characters in the Marvel Universe. Modoc. He's, hum he's Humpty Dumpty. He's, a, he's Humpty Dumpty was fleshed out. He's a good visual. I'll give it that. Like he, he looks really goofy, but like, yeah. I do, I do enjoy how he's been handled in the Marvel vs. Capcom games. I think they, they got, I think they got the right tone for him. It's just how goofy, fucking goofy he is, and he like, it's very clear he kind of enjoys just how fucking goofy he is. And I, I love like, there's actually like, a, there's been a lot of points in the Marvel universe where characters have been mo docified. Like their their head just gets mega boot mega beefed. Oh well, there you go. This makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, give him a mecha body that fits him. That makes that makes more sense. I wonder what drunk conversation and drawing session at Marvel led to mm -hmm. his creation. Uh, well, you know, he's kind of like a brainy a brain ver a brainified version of the Hulk, basically. He wasn't he originally like a a, a Hulk villain. That is beyond my knowledge scope. I don't know, uh, but I think he's like supposed to be like a, a a smarty man answer to the Hulk, whereas Hulk's kind of like a a giant bulky, a beefy dumbass. This is Brainy Boy. Wow. It's really simple. They just said, "What if big brain?" Yeah. Well, what what's going on here? What? Uh huh. Okay, that's just a smack. I thought uh, it looked like it, like Hulk was like. It looked kind of like Hulk was like scraping his hand or something, and there was like a spurt of blood or some shit. It's like what <laughs> blood on a co blood on the comics code approved comic cover? Yeah, I don't think so. What if big brain big brain time? Yeah. Okay, Google. How much time left on timer? I think we ran over. It looks like you don't I have don't. any timers. Sit at the. I moment. got I got distracted with Modok. His giant sexy head. Not gonna lie, if he if he was a good guy, I'd still hang out with him. Because I mean, you know, cool ass science dude, even if he's got a giant goofy ass head. Okay, Google, set timer for twenty minutes thirty seconds. Twenty minutes and thirty seconds, starting now. The whole like giant head for just thinking about killing and making stuff to kill and things like that. It's like, dude, you got a giant head. It's so big. Can I touch it? I want to like I haven't paid attention to what like they've done with uh, some of the weirder Marvel characters recently. They've done some like really really bizarre stuff in like little mini series or one shots with some of them, but I'd be interested in seeing if they did something really odd with Modoc recently. 
Like they gave it to they gave him to some underground cartoonist or some shit to do something really goofball. And or surreal. Cause he's one of the fucking weirdest characters. Weirdest and stupidest characters. Like the thing about stupid characters in um superhero comics is most of the ones that are stupid aren't very memorable. But Modok has stuck around because like that giant fucking head. I mean that's a that's a good visual, like put on covers and stuff. Like he's practically made just for the visual. Like he's just like a giant fucking head that just does like evil science man things, and you can have him just do whatever. And he's in a giant floaty chair. But... But yeah, I will not deny, he is a good visual, so... I think he's a stupid character, but... That doesn't mean he's a bad character. He's a fun character. And there's plenty of stuff in the Marvel, Marvel Universe that's stupid as hell, but fun and memorable. And I think the stupidity should be celebrated. And when it when it's really amusing and entertaining. Or just something to riff off of to make something really fucking weird. I give give Modoc to Grant Morrison and he'll do something really, really bizarre. I, I'm Modoc. I'm Baby. I only think about killing. So you guys only thinking about killing with your head getting huge? Well, it should be. Let's see, we got another hour of this. Good drawing workout. I don't care how many people show up for these. Uh, but I would love to find out. Like, we have a server of like 950 people or something, and. Only a small number of them actually show up for the figure drawing things. I'd love to find out how I can get more of them to show up for these. Not that I'm complaining, because, like... Um, I'm getting a lot... I'm getting, like, a tremendous amount of, like, what I set out exactly to do with the with this. And I'm totally not... I totally don't... I'm not focused on, like trying to like grow the twitch channel or something like that i'm focused on trying to get good at art and the anxiety of worrying about the growth of the twitch channel has like exited my body but i would be interested in figuring out how i can get more people more consistently involved because we have like over 900 people i'm sure i can get like at least like 10 or 20 more people to show up regularly Maybe different time zones, like trying to at a different time. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Because I do know that when I like have to work on some of the days, like eight thirty is like I'm just getting out of work and having dinner. So sometimes I'll be able to join, but I'll be joining like late. Sometimes Ready. I'll just be too tired after work. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that I think more people are going to show up too when I, um, just in general, when I, uh, get some good, when I get, like, get some record brand recognition from making good work. Because that, like, increases my credibility, so people are going to want to, like, come in and stuff. And so that becomes a matter, that that's on me. Like, I've got to make good-ass work that make people interested in me. 
and what I have to say. But that said, like I think that we can I think that we can peer pressure other people into showing up for good figure drawing workouts. It is really weird how like the ratio of the server, the people who join versus the people who are participate is really kind of like that though, but I mean that's whatever. I am really really happy with the progress I'm making and that's what's that's what matters the most right now. Like, I feel like the audience would grow over time. Like, so let, let's say I get hired to the industry and I work on something that's really neat. That, and then a few, other, a few more people might show up or something. I think a lot of it's just, like, crazy social media presence and just, like, fandoms like that. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that, like, I'm kind of... I, I would personally I would want to hit like a sweet spot for these where like I get enough people where I'm like sufficiently getting enough like donations, commissions, and Patreon to kind of keep the lights on for the operation, so to speak. But the main the main source of income I'm getting is from the professional work I'm doing. Like the little bit of extra scratch from doing these with donations and stuff. Or, um, I mean, it's it, it, the way I'm running these is it's kind of like I'm running through myself through my own free art school, basically. Nope, oh, we'll skip that lady. What? What? Why did the? I mean, this is an okay pose, I suppose, but Jesus, it's a little odd. Sometimes I just see the silhouette and yoink without really thinking about it when I put it in the folder. Alright, I go more into exaggeration this evening, but um sort of feeling the vibe of just like slowing down a bit and kind of feeling my lines out a little bit more deliberately. That's good to do on Monday. We can get more into pushing stuff again on Wednesday. Because we're going to be doing extrapolation. And that's going to involve like a lot more pushing of exaggeration and combining it with um, the spinning, spinning stuff into different poses. Or, or extrapolating them onto characters that are very different. And what you're drawing or then uh, what the figure model is yeah you can see like I'm using like the strategies of the ground planes and stuff like look at Raboots you watching look at that so yes 3d strategy look at look at the back there curve forms over the back look at the look at the look at the, the arm here Right here, the ar this arm right here is like the elbow would be about here ish. Um, it's kind of like a this is kind of a gestural thing, but like, and then these these two feet are co-related to each other, and that's something that I noticed in the pose that I saw. Uh, yeah, and let's see here what's some other stuff like you well, you can see like I used a little I used a kind of a lightweight floor grid here that's kind of like bordering on being a floor shadow. Uh. There's this one here that uses the jump rope, the jump rope curve, connecting the feet together and the kind of a floor shadow pattern. And this one I used both a bit of a floor grid and a, sh and a jump rope and a kind of a shadow-ish. This one is a shadow and it's kind of masked in a little bit, but it like it, it tracks to a grid that I didn't necessarily draw, draw it on the ground. And it's not accurate. It's like kind of a guesstimate 
estimation that sort of plays off the sh plays off what the pose is doing. And there's other stuff like uh, this racket right here, from the angle that it, that's at right now. Like I could actually maybe add in some of that, but I don't really need to because I see this. I see what angle the cylinder of it or no, the uh, the ellipse is at of the racket. But you can see like, so I'm thinking about like this line wrapping over here between the two shoulders around the back. Sample right there. I'm thinking about like the hips here because the hips are kind of tilted in that pose. But I'm thinking about like these three dimensional cues all the time in these. I don't think there's enough time to do this pose, but let's maybe play with some of the rhythms of it to extrapolate something out of it. So you see I'm not like doing strictly the pose that I'm looking at right now in this little kind of freehand extrapolation exercise. But it sort of plays off some of the things that are happening there just a little bit. This is not strictly what extrapolation is about. Like you want to, if you want, like uh, this is more delving into the territory of exaggeration. So exaggeration tends to deal more with changing the pose, but extrapolation can also like can also deal with that a little bit too. It's kind of really abstract, but. Do you get what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm like, you're just trying to drive from a different angle and try to a little bit make it make sense. or or change the pose entirely and riff on it to create something new. Uh, you might have like one or two rhythms that are similar to the pose, or you might like use it use the pose as a kind of like a uh, something to play off of. Like the pose that you drew isn't anything like the pose that you're looking at, but you kind of used it to sort of riff a bit. Like I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do that right now, actually. So like this is very, very different from what you're seeing there. In fact, I'm going to like change the positions of the legs entirely and he's not going to even be running, but he's got some, there's like some similar things happening. And also like, I, I didn't even necessarily have to make it anything like anything like that pose at all. Like this is still vaguely resembling the, the run pose that he's in just a little bit. Uh, I could have changed it entirely from what it was, but looking at what he's doing is something that I can play with and riff off of. Like, let's invent. So when you extrapolate and you exaggerate, you can also play off existing poses to invent your poses like that. Like, you key into the energy of how, of how a human figure works. to think almost laterally about what you're seeing. Like, for example, uh, the way that guy's foot is planted there, I'm going to kind of kind of use it kind of for a very different pose here. This is not the pose that he's taking at all. Not even remotely. I have some ideas in my head. I'm just kind of playing with but I used him as kind of like a starting point to riff off of. I think I might want to move the head actually here. There we go. So I'll turn that hand that way. This is a very, very different pose here. But I started 
by playing with what I was seeing there. So there's going to be times when you do want to copy what the pose, what the model's doing, what times, and sometimes when you want to extrapolate and reinvent and change and stuff. Just try not to use it as a crutch to be lazy. You know me. So I do kind of like what her feet are doing, but I'm going to change their positions here. Still going to try to correlate them a bit. I'm doing a very different pose from what she's doing. Shift the buttocks down here. Maybe turn the head up here. It's almost like an animations animation in between smear a little bit. It's maybe her eye is like here. Something like that. So her body is like doing this torso twist and her head is turning that way. Bottom of the foot there. Tilt at the pelvis there, tilt to the shoulders here. And this is a completely different pose from what's happening. But we couldn't get like experiments like this out of our head without trying the other stuff too and part of the fun of this is like seeing what you can get away with and try to break or mess with so on screen right now is what they call a figure lay-in for longer pose figure drawing classes As we start getting more fluent with the gesture drawing, our just like some of what we're going to be doing later on is going to look a lot more like that. Um, maybe probably more exaggerated because we are um, dealing more with like how to f like figure drawing as a tool for animators, and so inherently like a lot of our stuff is going to be very abbreviated and exaggerated and pushing like storytelling. But I'm sticking, I'm spending extra time on this pose to show you guys what I'm talking about, how you can use extrapolation, exaggeration, play with it, just kind of break it and mess with it. To invent your own poses and stuff. I'm going to maybe take a little detour to show, like, strategies of how you can take these, some of the more pl planar poses where I played a little safe, and how you can potentially exaggerate them. Like this guy right here, for example. You can really kind of bow back the upper body. Here, like that. keep thinking that's Tom Hiddleston every single time we see that image. <laughs> okay, Google, uh, set timer for five minutes. 
Done. Five minutes added to your 20 minute and 30 second timer. I'm going to encourage people to maybe do kind of what I'm doing, like draw next to or over poses that you've just done, changing the poses up or exaggerating them, like taking the action that's there and running with an idea you have. Try like changing the limb sizes, try, try changing the pose slightly, like pushing what's happening a bit more one, one way or another. You want to have a point to why you're doing it, like... Uh, for this guy right here, I want him, like, seeming more like he's at the ready. Sometimes you can just play with it, and you can just vibe and come up with rhythms and stuff that just kind of feel fun to flow with and discover things. But a lot of times it helps to have a plan of attack for your exaggerating. Let's see here. What can I do with this? Uh, let's see. It's a lot of different. So really kind of hold that. Maybe make the ball smaller. So it's less important than... Than his feet. Let's make his feet really important here. Like his, let's maybe make the feet the most important thing. Legs are still pretty important, but let's make like the feet super important to the point that they get stretched out immensely. So it'll be like a shoe ad where you can see like the giant shoes. Follow there. This little tiny head, very tiny head there. And then let's maybe make like uh this is an undershot of the hoop right there. And then to reinforce like how crazy this is. It's like so you got a reaching for him here, and he's got his arm stretching back into space like that. And then we get like the beams and like the scoreboard back here on the center of 14, 8, I don't know. We're looking at the underside of his jersey there. And then we got like a fun little start of a comp study that could potentially go into like an illustrate a little exaggerated sports illustration. Uh, let's see here, Ex strategy for exaggerated and pushing story in this guy. I uh, really, really have him pushing the ball. So let's let's make his foot really big. So that the underside of his cleats and stuff. Let's maybe make the ball kind of, let's maybe make the ball kind of squish a bit like that. So it's the power of, power of his foot. Let's maybe like push his body back. I like him like kind of, I like seeing like enough of his face. So like we can see like just, in, just barely enough of his face and maybe make his limbs less important. Because maybe push his head size a bit so we can make it read. So we have some, some kind of doofy expression on his face. So he's got kind of like, even though like his body's going back in space, he's, his head is kind of big head a little bit. Maybe we can push that even more to make that even more blatant exaggeration.
Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. Done. 20 minutes added to your timer. Okay, Google, add 30 seconds to timer. Done. 30 seconds added to your 20 minute timer. You've got 20 minutes and 24 seconds to go. And there we go. So yeah, I'm going to uh, heavily encourage people to do that. In fact, uh, that's going to be my homework for you for this class, uh, quote-unquote homework. Uh, go back over your drawings and try to see, figure out ways you can push the gesture and exaggerate it and stuff. Maybe like, and if you really, if you want to, if you feel like it, maybe uh, try to try to develop them more into more thought-out cartoon drawings. Like you take a gestural thing like this and you go, but you go in and for your next pass you like, kind of work out like the clothes. Is that his thigh or is that his body? I don't, I don't think I really decided there. I think it works better if that's his thigh, don't you? Let's see. Yeah, that works better. Like you can like work out like the general kind of masses of the volumes of where stuff is, then you go back in and get more specific with it. Do another few do another pass or two on it. Yeah, that's just an example. This is a very good session tonight, I would say. Like, I think this is like successful momentum building from the last uh, few weeks or so. And again, this is Monday, so this is our reorientation day. So this is us kind of getting back into the groove a little bit. If you had a little bit of a weekday on Sunday. I meant to actually do more drawing and studying yesterday, but you know what happened? Like, uh, I know what happened. Uh... The artists and uh, the staff members in Ethan's Becker server were playing Valheim. <laughs> and so I had to join them. And I wound up doing that. But I did get some really good drawing in yesterday. That's where I got those... Um, those costume dancer idea characters drawn yesterday. So I'm definitely going to put, uh, so stick around after the stream. I'm going to put on something fun to watch. We'll figure out what. What are you guys up to watch tonight? A TV show or movie or something. Something fun. Be even down with the documentary if the documentary is really fun. Like, I don't know, a Toys That Made Us episode or something. That might be fun. We need something fun, something juicy. Do you guys have any ideas? Because I got Netflix, I got Disney+, Plus, I got Amazon Prime.
Have you already seen Wolf, um, Wolfwalker? I have not, but I want to make special time to see that. Yeah, that is a real. I won't. After this, I gotta go. I'm gonna go shower and just do actual physical workout after this class. But yeah. At some point, watching that's fair. That, it's it's an amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I think I have to be like. I definitely, I definitely think I want to screen it at some point for sure. Um. Also, something that's not necessarily like it's really good animation and it's fun. But it's not like the best story is God of High School, the anime. Yeah. It has some amazing fight scenes in it. Not exactly the best the story, though. Story, yeah, the story is not. So, if you want something that's dumb, fun, yeah. to get your, get your blood pumping, I'd recommend it. Yeah, I've, se yeah, I've already somebody, seen it. <laughs> oh, oh, you already saw it. Okay. No, it was good for yeah. what it was. For what it was. I knew it was going to be a dumb story because I read the webtoon, so I just had fun. In it's basically just like, uh, characters are MOBA esports, uh, or fighting game tournament characters in real life. Basically, yeah. Which begs the question of why can't, of why, like, uh, I mean, there is that whole issue of, like, if you, like, you can't really do a sports manga with a battle manga because there's always the pro, the, the, the issue of, like, well, um, a character could just get fucking killed and then they're just gone forever. And that doesn't really work too, barring some, like, tragic moments in, uh, in sports comics, that doesn't really work as well because the whole point, one of the big, good things about a sports manga is um or a sports comic story in general is like the opponents that they face uh learn from the mistakes and they have they they often make they often come back at them again later and they uh there's often like character development with like the former opponents and stuff sometimes join forces with the characters and things like that 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 I guess, yeah, like, to me that's actually a, a lot more interesting than characters just fucking dying sometimes. Yeah, that's the that's the draw of sports, um, comics and anime. Have you ever seen Baby Steps? No. But that I mean, like... Oh. But I mean, like, I'm thinking, like, uh, I'd like to see... Remember, uh, remember there was, like, a, a spin-off of Sword Art Online called Gun, Gun Gal? Oh yeah, I heard of that one. Yeah, it was actually pretty all right for what it. I liked it better than Sword Art. Um, written, I think it was written by someone else. Yeah, but it's like more like an FPS style, a FPS battle royale scenario, basically. And I actually liked it better than Sword Art. And I kind of like what? Why? Why can't there be like a um, competitive, uh, competitive esports? Uh, uh, competitive like future esports uh like uh anime series or something like kind of like this there kind of is in a webtoon i forgot the name of it is though oh there's a couple one of the ones i know of that's a webtoon is no scope which is um, oh good just, yeah it's that one's um, actually about like actual it's about actual FPS. Like, it, it doesn't do the you die in a game, you die in real life thing. Well, no, no. You're playing a very popular well, game. Well, I, I don't even want that to happen. Like, the, the good thing about Gun Gal yeah. Online is it's like, is it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with any of the, the reality encroaching on that. No, no, it's just, a, you're, they're, they're playing a video game. It's a video yeah, game. It's a video game. It's a VR video game. It's a VR brain dancing video, brain dance video game, basically. But there's yeah. not, none of the, um, there's none of the, like, uh, sci-fi mind hack, um, stuck in the machine type shit. It's just all about the sporting event and the, uh, the character's ingenuity and, and, uh, winning the sporting event and stuff with their abilities. And also their personal relationships with other characters, which is more interesting to me. Like, there, there, there's like a little bit at the end of the Gun Gal Online, uh, series that's about, like, the characters finally meeting each other in real life and discovering that like they're 
they have a lot of they have similar awkward issues themselves oh, as each other, which I thought was really fun, fun and uh, and heartwarming. So I'm more I'm I'm interested in some in a series that does that kind of stuff like that in a longer term. Yeah, no scope does a lot is more about that like the um the going into esports and then the just social relationships between mm -hmm. the characters in it than it is about like it does have some of the game it doesn't it has, does have some of the game stuff but it's more so focused on the character and like their relation yeah because that would be like the real meat of making an actual story is if you have some kind of internal logic with what's going on with the character development and stuff otherwise you're just you're just reading off a description of esports game events Like there has to be some kind of an if then for what the characters are going through or what what's happening in the game in the uh, in the story. If then therefore, but then in spite of. It's writing one writing writers one oh one type stuff. Matt Stone and Trey Parker mentioned that, but that's actually something that they got from someone else. I forget who though, but the idea being that like you're not making a very interesting story if you just say and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens. No, no, you need like a, you need like some kind of internal logic like because the because this happened and then then this happened and uh, meanwhile, uh, in spite of this happening, this happens, or or, and so on. Like, that's just like a rule of thumb, to kind of do a gut check on your story. To see if it has like any kind of like internal logic for. Character develop character, um, character development or like. Uh, follow, or like if the story is following a logical flow of events. Doesn't necessarily mean that it will have those things, but that's like usually a, a rule of thumb way to check. To do a gut check on a story to see if it is actually working like that. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? You've got seven minutes and 18 seconds remaining. They're good. They're good. I'm getting very fluent with this guy. Um, so fluent to the point that, like, when I do these, I should maybe, like, start doing more of this. Where, like, I go back through and I start, like, kind of putting shapes and muscles on them. Muscles and bone on them. Just shorthand. Just kind of masking in stuff, like taking, getting used to like going through the next step of things. Whoops. So I can like start making more consistent figure, uh, figure illustrations. Oh yeah, that reminds me, there's an illustrator I wanted to share with people today that I found some work of that I was really inspired by. I'll do that during the next break. I think I need to rest my hand a little bit. I'm going to take a look at what other people are doing. But I think I was pressing I was pressing on my hand a little bit hard, so earlier, so now I'm starting to need to take some pressure off it for a bit. I have a bit of that issue where when I'm pressing on my hand too much, my palm. Yeah, my I, palm you're, yeah, hurt. you're not supposed to put pressure on your hand, but like sometimes, like if you don't take a break from drawing for a little while, you'll start to, you'll start to like put pressure that you shouldn't. 
on your hand, which is what happened here. So I'm just going to take my hand off of it, and then I'm going to shake my hand out and reorient and stuff while I take a look at other people's drawings in the Discord. There we go. Lovely. And uh, those of you who are in the chat here, Discord. So those of you who are, uh, there's more of you actually in Twitch right now than there are in the Discord. But if you want to come in and hang, there's the link right there in Twitch chat. Yeah, those are looking better already, Raboots. You're, you're thinking about like the vanishing point and stuff. Uh, and eventually you're going to, I want you to really start thinking about how the vanishing point changes on the figure going up and what kind of cues on the body, the landmarks that you can use on the gesture or the body um, to imply that 3D stuff. Uh, uh, Raboots, take a good long look at Mike Patisi's force stuff and try to look for that kind of stuff that I'm talking about. You can see it actually in uh, the Trad Moore stuff. That I've been getting vibing and inspira and get vibing inspiration from a lot. Like you can see, like um, let me find some good example. That one's a little bit more flat. Um, but you can see, like right here, for example, on the Deadpool one, you can see how he correlates. It's heavily exaggerated, but you can see how he correlates the knees to each other in 3D space. Like you can see the wrap that's happening. In space, you can definitely see it on this fig this character back here. The chest, the curve, curve lines over the chest. Um, why don't you start looking at work that really kind of pushes that stuff? Mike Matisse's force does it like a lot. Uh, Bern Hogarth does it too. Um, but look for look for where the stuff is like giving indications of depth. In this case, like this is heavily stylized because this is like um, trad more going more a little bit more psychedelic. So these are very stylized. These aren't very dimensional. Those are kind of a little bit flatter intentionally, but they still are. But how they're placed is still kind of makes sense three dimensionally. This one's a little bit better in the direction of what I'm talking about. It's really super bendy here, but this is still like you still get a sense of the three dimensionality of this thing. And, uh, you can see those depth cues and stuff here on, like, the, the turn of the hips. If you, you can see the corner of the hip right there, so the turn of the hips and so on. Hopefully ad adapt Silver Surfer Black in animation. That'd be pretty rad if they haven't already. That's a really extreme example with the figure in the background there with this huge, huge knees correlating to each other. You can see it happen again with the thighs and the hips. That torso twist happening at a different angle here. Big old depth cue right there with that sword. Heavy exaggeration happening on Bat... Heavy rhythmic exaggeration happening on Batman here. Uh... But it still has depth cues on like the the bottom plane of the shoe, plane the plane of the front of the calf here, and the plane of the top of the knee, the different the side plane of the head and the front plane of the head, even the top plane a little bit. Top planes of those del those giant deltoids. They're coming up there. Yeah, anyway, uh, let's see. Let's get back to uh, what people are doing in Discord. Arts and goodies, I would say, uh, I think, I don't know what size you're drawing at, but I would draw, want to draw larger if possible. Uh, so you might be holding yourself back by drawing digitally right now. I would try to maybe get a bunch of, a bunch of cheap paper. Uh, and I, I would actually encourage even Raboots to do this too. Get get a bunch of cheap paper and start like mixing up. You can still draw digitally too, but I would try to get a lot of like get a lot of traditional with some cheap material, cheap drawing material. Whoops, some cheap drawing materials in. Oh, because I was like making sure to like 
I could also just draw larger on digital. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that'll help too. Uh, like, uh, that'll help you tighten up a little less. Um, but I think I want you, uh, I, I got a lot of the people who are drawing digitally, and I know that they're drawing, uh, and, uh, you, and there's usually like the sign that they're drawing digitally a little bit too much out of the gate. They tend to be really like kind of whispery and timid with their lines. Uh, I want people to start getting messy with stuff and moving with and like I, I want people to start to like get like some cheap um, sharpies and number two pencils and ballpoint pens and stuff and get some cheap uh, paper and uh, and just start pushing themselves just like breaking the fi like uh, breaking the figure pushing beyond it and really really scribbling into the paper and stuff. Um, Like, don't be here we go this i think this is traditional yeah uh that one's a really good example right there even this is starting to move a little bit better and like see like an active side and inactive side right there and these are starting to look better um like go even more confidently than these i would say would be the next step like try to find where your sweet spot is for your hand eye dex for your hand dexterity being able to pull off smoother lines and remember to remember to keep you remember to keep drawing from your from your arm and not from your wrist. But yeah, that's that's starting to move in the right direction, I would say. Um, these are really tiny, but I do see some attempts at dimensionality in them. Some of them aren't too well balanced, but uh, I do see like you trying to place the feet and space out the hips, and then use like the cue of the shoulders and stuff there. You see, like, even at this size, I can kind of read that. Some of these aren't as well balanced. Like, this one right here, maybe, like, the foot needed to be back there. And this, that back calf is, that back calf is really fucking long. Daddy long legs going on there. Um, so, uh, a lot of these, though, they kind of suffer from the same problem I was talking about. They're a little bit too timid. I want people to get bold. And I, I mean bold and brash. I want people to just, like, really, let, let, let's, let's look at Mike Matisse force here. So we are on break right now for about a little bit. We'll close out the evening with some more pose drawings. But let's take a look at Mike Matisse 4. So these are like um, really flowy, rhythmical drawing stuff. If you can find videos of him drawing, I would suggest looking at them for sure. But like... Uh, you would you would definitely want to like combine what he does with other things. But a lot of the way that I'm drawing is kind of based on what he does right now, even though I'm not consciously necessarily using his methods. Like um, a lot of the, the exact same stuff is the kind of stuff that like Glenn Vilpu teaches. So that's inherently coming through, even though I, ha I, I really do want to dig more into him, uh, more into more into Mike Matisse. But um, his books are pretty fantastic and I do recommend checking them out. You know what, folks, uh, maybe we should check out some of them tomorrow in the Discord. We'll do that. We'll take a peek at some of his, uh, some of Mike Matisse's stuff tomorrow. Because so I think that'll be the next logical step for me to punch up my own figure exaggeration and uh, extrapolation and just like overall solid figures. Like that, he, you can see why I wanted to bring him up when I was talking about, and not just Bern Hogarth when I was talking about, um, uh, when I was talking about uh, Trad Moore here, so it's like pretty blatantly obvious that Trad Moore is influenced by like Bern Hogarth and if not Mike Matisse, well, I think he probably is influenced by Mike Matisse. Um, uh, if not Mike Matisse, then like uh, artists kind of in his vein, because like the principles of exaggeration and like forced language and stuff is like all is like pretty spot on to the way Mike Matisse teaches and stuff. I mean, look at that. Yeah, see, you get the you get the landmarks, you get like the correlating the limbs together, you get the sense of direction and so on. This is a lot more descriptive and stuff. This is a lot more thought out than even the way that I'm doing things right now. So I do think that like really digging into maybe this might be the next logical step to complement the other stuff we're doing in addition to the extrapolation stuff we're doing this week.
So I'm definitely going to say that we should pay very close attention to Mike Matisse tomorrow. You guys down with a force with a force study session tomorrow? And throughout the week for that matter. Jello. Anybody there? There we go. Oh, by, by the way, Mike Matisse has a YouTube channel. Yeah, now. he does. Or, yeah. Uh, one of his streams actually comes on at the same time that mine does. I was thinking of actually rescheduling mine in the future so people can uh, check his out and maybe like vibe from before, before or after his stream with with whatever I'm doing. Because then, like, I I what I'd do is I'd watch it in my Discord uh, with my audience uh, and just hang out. Hang out there, and we can. It'd be encouragement to kind of vibe with what he's doing, and then uh, and then we'd go from we'd either go from that to my class, or we'd um, or 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 we'd uh, do my class before his, or however it's however it's scheduled. It's like Force Fridays, I think it's called, right? A TC. Yeah, he does Force Friday lectures. Force Fridays. Do you know what time it is on Friday? Uh, I think it's generally like two or three p.m. Eastern time. So hmm. I think that's when he tends. To... Uh, like I was. Okay, Google. What that. time? What time is three p.m. Eastern time to Pacific time? 12 p.m. Monday in Pacific time. And by the way, if you're okay, Google, really stop. Cure... Well, and then if that's the case, then that that might be something we could meet up and do before class. It might be later than that. I just mm -hmm. isn't easy. Drawing. I think it's around that time. Well, here's an interview. There's some good interviews with artists and stuff. I, I think it, this channel is worth checking out for sure. Uh, more in detail maybe we could watch some i think we we'll maybe watch some of his live stream uh, you know like because they record the live streams maybe we can just watch the live streams later instead of the live ones but uh, watching them live mean is a little bit more fun in some cases uh and immediate maybe, maybe tomorrow for like studying looking at some of the live streams yeah for sure i'll leave this open so i remember to do that but i mean this is really nice it's cool too because like he shows how to like he and he and his like other instructors and stuff show how to like think in terms of like these kind of like volumetric shapes that you interlock together and so on and uh rhythmical lines and so on. you can see like there's little bits and force ideas that i'm not really like specifically like referencing his method to use but you can see them kind of filtering in the way that i'm drawing uh, there are a few habits I think I have that are kind of holding me back a little bit in that regard. But you you see you often see me like do stuff like this, where like I'm I'm drawing like kind of like the exterior rhythms of the form, and that's like that's like very that's like very something from Mike Matisse's work. Like it, this is like barely like that. This is like the co-relating rhythms. Like I'm not drawing I'm not drawing the line fully out, but it's like. It's like kind of most kind of like rhythmical connect the dots to figure out what, what well, like what what space the figure is occupying or something. Like here we go. The, fi the figure is facing his head that way. Body's facing that way too. I've decided. So see the back of his legs, the back of his buttocks, so on. Back of his hands. Then we can like see this guy, for example. And maybe we kind of Yeah, I'm not using the force. 
right in here. I gotta use the force. That means I need to think in terms of cascading correlating rhythms. Like there's this flow that travels through all of it. The shift of his buttocks that's causing the leg to thrust up there. Anyway, this kind of this is like direct. Uh, this is like uh, directly correlated to like the way I was drawing last week when I was looking at lots of um, the trad more stuff, and this like more kind of hooks closer into my like the best side of my thought process when I'm drawing. So definitely tomorrow, more focus on Mike Matisse's force. For sure. Hope you like this little demo. Of me trying to like emulate from muscle memory the stuff that I've taken from what little I've studied of, relatively speaking, of what of Mike Matisse has to offer. I really need to dig way more in depth with him. The only reason I haven't is because like um like a lot of what he teaches is very, very similar to other things that I learned from other people. But I think right now would be a great time to kind of double down on him specifically. Uh, I hope you were drawing along with that because I'm counting that as part of the uh, what? Well, counting this as part of the end point of the class right now. In fact, I'll, I'll just leave it on this pose. Just make this like a long pose to kind of play with extrapolating, exaggerating, and maybe use it. Uh, maybe use this time to kind of freehand out some of the rhythmical exterior forms of a gesture, kind of like what I'm doing here, of like what Mike Patisi has. Like this is my shorthand for roughing and figures and like having them have like a good gestural flow as you use this to kind of rough in the feeling of posture and balance and stuff like this guy. His hips are tilted that way, his shoulders are tilted like this. Standing here on the 3D space down below. Here's one of Matisse's force ideas right here. Kind of square shape for the bendy square shape for the torso that's sort of bending off the pelvis it's kind of more of a ball shape yeah the thing specifically that i'm talking about when i do the exteriors of the forms is the rhythms and he's doing a demonstration of that here like like, most of what you've been seeing me do with those little puppets right here, like these little guys, these are mostly rhythms right here. Rhythm gesture. Like, this guy's a rhythm gesture. Um, I 
And if you can get your rhythm gesture strong, you're good. Like, breaking down the shapes is not going to be that hard. But you do need to practice breaking down the shapes, too. So we got this foreshortened thigh here. Maybe like place his foot and his toe down there, I'll say. Adjust his hips a little bit. It's showing how you can like further play with a pose. We are pretty close to quitting time. So just start wrapping up. Uh, do what you gotta do. I'm leaving this pose on screen for you guys to draw and play with. And what I'm doing, like I said, is I'm kind of running down the inventory of what, what I remember out of studying Mike Matisse that I have in my visual library right now. Because we are going to be going into him tomorrow, and I'll be talking more about him on Wednesday uh, pro Wednesday or Friday, uh, depending on how, how prepped I am for that. Uh, Wednesday is mainly going to be about the extrapolation stuff, I think. But I think I can strategize of a way to combine that with Matisse stuff. Or it might be a good idea to save uh, to save the focus on Matisse for Friday. Because, you know, Force Friday and whatnot. <laughs> but I, I do really feel strongly about studying him tomorrow. I think combining him with the um, extrapolation drawing stuff that we're going to we're going to go into with Alex Wood might be a good idea. How are we doing? Do you guys need any extra time on this pose that's on screen, or are we good? So I'm about ready to end the stream right here, and then we will put on something fun to watch in the Discord. And what are you keen- first off, what are you keen to watch? If we can't think of anything, I can look down like uh, I can look down the streaming services I have after the stream is ended, and we'll find we'll figure out something. I'm gonna hop off now. Um, but Alrighty. Class. Yeah. Uh, what time tomorrow are you gonna be doing the? I I'll, I'll just be doing it anytime. Um, 
it's just going to be like a study and vibe thing. Well, it's just going to come as you go kind of thing. Right. So it, it could happen anytime. Uh, I will ping. The, uh, do you know about, are you in the super space, are you in the, uh, the super yeah. space cadets tag? Yeah, I'll ping it. I'll ping it when I do it. Okay. Because like, I have the hardest time like getting started on mm -hmm. stuff in the morning when I, when I have time to like, yeah, I just have the hardest time building it in the momentum at night. I can do it. I can get started much quicker, but I need to get better. Well, uh, stuff in the morning. another thing you can do is, um, and I, I actually strongly encourage people to do it. Um, even when I'm not around, uh, come into the, I think anyone can ping the supers tag. Uh, I might be able to deputize like special kind of like I might be able to deputize like certain people like contact me if you want to lead regular drawing sessions in the discord I can deputize you so I can give you permit special permissions to lead to lead study sessions and things so anyone who wants anyone who wants to do that please DM me uh, I will give you permission uh, well, you actually don't really need permission to run classes with that, but like, a, but me giving me giving you um, special permission role or something like that will give you some extra tools that might make things a little easier in certain situations. Like if you need to manage the voice chat, if you get someone hot miking who's uh, AFK or some shit. Um, but uh, yeah, DM DM me if you're interested in doing that. And uh, what I would suggest is if you can't, if like if you can't make this normal study times when I'm uh, around, then uh, yoink some of the study material. Like you can yoink some of the Mike Matisse stuff, or you can yoink some other things that you're interested in digging into, and uh, and this, just study together. But the yeah yeah the main thing is is that when I give people permission to run study groups, uh, I will give them permission to use the to use. The super the the uh, supers tag pings to uh, ping for study groups. Thank you for the class. I'm gonna hop off now. I might do some storyboarding stuff. Like I gotta work on storyboards. For oh wow. Web, because I'm working on a webtoon. Nice. I have it mostly scripted out. At least scripted out enough to the point where it's like I just gotta start storyboarding a bunch of it. Mhm. Mm yeah. yeah. Thank you for the class. Looks like we only have about like three people in here and one of them's leaving, so yeah. it looks like we're not gonna be able to play I don't th I think we're gonna hold off on streaming something fun. Maybe we can do stream something fun tomorrow during the day when people are around in between our studies. So I'll cut it off here. Thank you for coming. <laughs>